Ike Choco here from Splice and Post, and I have another Adobe Speedgrade CSX tutorial. Um, today I'm going to um, show you guys around the general user interface or the GUI, as a lot of people um, refer to it. So let's just dive right into it. When you first open Adobe Speedgrade CSX, you're greeted with this um, interface, all right, and it's very simple to maneuver around it, okay. Um, I'm going to try to do this in two parts because it's going to be a little longer because I'm trying to make sure that I don't leave anything out. All right. So for beginners and even for people who are already familiar with Speedgrade, you might want to stick around and watch this because um, you might be able to learn a thing or two that even though you're familiar with the interface, you might have skipped or didn't notice. All right. So let's dive right into it. Um, on the left side, of um, the interface is um, basically everything that lives on your system okay so this is where you could access your files and uh, your footages and your documents basically everything that is on your system so whatever drive that is um, connected to your system your internal drives your external drives um, as you can see I'm working on an Avid ISA storage system here because uh, uh, um, I'm, I'm actually in a company, so um, there are other, color, other editors um, and other colorists and people that I work with. Okay, so we connected via an Avid ISIS, but also my system has an internal RAID. So as you can see, everything that um, is on your system, the drives and everything could be accessed through this um, session here. Okay, so if you're looking for footage or a file, um, you might want to just um, sometimes, you know, um, because this is kind of like movable, okay, or you might, um, you know, change something here and this is what you're going to have. You're going to be in the monitor section and you can't find it, okay? So always make sure that you are in your desktop, okay? Every time that you can't find this, always go to the top here and click your desktop and um, you're going to see um, the section where you could be able to look at your drives and whatnot, okay? This section here is um, where your files are being populated. So when you basically select a, a drive here and you search for um, a particular file, okay, when SpeedGrid finds it, it'll be populated here. All right. So um, let me just go ahead and uh, start, you know, doing certain things so you guys could see how this works. Um, let's just say I need to search for something on my RAID 5. Um, drive okay I have a whole bunch of files on there all right and um, in my case if you work in, in a shared um, storage environment or even if you are uh, a freelance editor or a freelance colorist or visual effects person and you have different drives with hundreds and hundreds of footages um, one of the things I would advise is never select your root drive to search okay because what happens is um, speed grid will go in and try to bring up every file so even files that are not even relevant to whatever work you're trying to do at a particular point in time so let's say you just need out of a hundred files you're looking for just 10 MOV files but it's gonna go in and bring in the MOVs WAV mp3 whatever file that if, if it gets its hands on is gonna bring it up and maybe that is not what you're trying to do because it might slow you down all right so a quick tip Okay, is um, try to make sure that you drill down to the specific folder that you're working with so that this way you are not um, wasting too much time trying to filter out um, files. All right, now there are certain ways that you could be able to quickly filter out certain files if you want to use a technique to um, um, search your root drive, but I'm going to get to that in just a minute. Okay, so here I'm going to just drill down. Okay, as you can see. I have um, different folders here and uh, a quick tip for you if you're a colorist or an editor all right um, unless maybe you're doing this um, as um, a part a part-time thing or this is really not serious something that you just do for fun something you just do to kill time but if this is your work your career then one thing I'll advise you to do especially if you're an editor all right try as much as you can to manage your data very wisely okay there is nothing in this world that beats 
better data management because you don't want to find yourself in an environment like this your client is sitting behind you and you taking about 10 minutes trying to find just five footages why because you didn't properly manage your data okay so always make sure that everything is in the right place all right time codes are marching um, if you use an um, if you working on um, film footages or whatever it is make sure that everything is in the right reels right at the right time code or the right folders or however you want to work but just make sure that everything is in a place where you could quickly go in and grab it all right so that is just a quick tip there for you okay so here um, I'm gonna go here and um, under my short films I'm gonna select this now this is what happens with speed grid anytime that you select something all right just look right here it's gonna to try to scan through what you selected and see if it finds anything. Over here, it's telling me that it found nothing. But the thing about it is, I know very well that there's a whole bunch of files in there. So why is it telling me it found nothing? Now, the reason why it's telling me it found nothing is because of this setting right here. Now, when you click here, there are a whole bunch of other settings that you could select. The default, every time that you open speed grade, okay unless you already changed it but if you just opening speed grid for the first time it is gonna say sequences from selected folder what this is saying is that speed grid is going to look into this particular folder and whatever file is in this folder is gonna populate it here alright so the reason why it's not showing me any files right now is because under my short films or inside my short films I still have a whole bunch of subfolders so speed grade can't find no files because there are really no files in the short films folder it is nothing but subfolders all right now if i wanted speed grade to find my folders or and my subfolders what i would have gone to do was click here and select sequences from folder and subtree now immediately i do that it's going to rescan and it found 83 files Okay, so now instead of it just looking into the short films folder, it looks into the folder and every folder that is in the subsection and it pulls out my file. So that is also another quick tip. Let's just say you might you, you might want to select the root folder, um, the root drive, I'm sorry, and it's uh, on selected folders alone and you clicking on your root drive and nothing is happening. All right. What you might want to do is just go in there okay select sequences from folder and subtree then it's gonna scan through your whole drive and right now you see what happened I have well over a thousand files okay because I selected the root drive and under the root drive there are different subcategories different folders with different files okay so it went in there in every single file that is in my read my read 5 it brought it up alright so um, that is also a quick tip there one thing that I will also advise if you work in um, like this and you have a lot of subfolders and um, things like that you might also always want to drill down to at least the last folder that is in that section okay so that you could specify because you might not be working on um, a very quick responsive system maybe you might be on a laptop or you know a, a system that is not too much powerful on RAM or whatever and you wouldn't want your client to sit down there waiting for speed grade to go through and try to find files okay so if you if you have that problem I will suggest you like in this case let's say I just want to um, choose some files in my short films okay I will draw down okay to the last folder that I know that my files are in in this case they are in the title section the under my other side section then I have these two okay these two are the last folders in this tree here okay so if I select my ext all right it found 31 files there all right quickly um, let me go through some stuff before I end the session here um, these um, 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 buttons on the top here I will um, go through them real quick um, the thumbnail size is pretty much self-explanatory okay um, you could just drag this to the right to kind of expand um, the, uh, the thumbnail or you could drag it to the left to make it smaller okay so if you want to see a very um, bigger um, version of your thumbnail so you could just drag it here and make it um, bigger okay um, the beautiful thing about um, 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 speed grade is these thumbnails could actually be scrubbed so you could actually go in and scrub 
through the frames to see if that is actually the tick that you want okay and the way you do that is you hover your mouse right at the top here you see it turns red here okay you click hold and you just scrub through it okay so I could look at it and I will know okay this is the tick that I want all right you could do it each and every one of them okay so that is a very good feature there um, over here is show thumbnails so you could toggle this on and off so if I toggle it off you know everything just um, goes away um, you might not want to do this okay so I'll show my thumbnails um, here there is thumbnails versus list now um, I said versus because the bo both of them are not the same honestly both of them really are not because thumbnails just gives you two um, options here on your file actually it gives you the name and the resolution that's all you get but if you go into list mode you are able to have more information about your clips okay it is not too much more information but it gives you more information or better information than here so if I click on list now I have not only my file name but I have time code and this is something that's really really important okay then you have your resolution and modified date all right um, as you can see I have no time code here because I'm working with DSLR footages now it's not an excuse because every DSLR footage that I get I prep it with time codes before I even start editing so I will try my best to see if I could make a quick tutorial uh, in another series um, on how to add time codes to DSLR so if you shoot in Canon or Nikon or whatever it is you could be able to add time codes um, before you start editing them all right um, so you could decide to use a list or the thumbnail it's all up to you only thing about the list view is that um, you don't have the option to scrub okay so I, I'm trying but nothing is gonna happen here okay so I usually leave the thumbnails um, if I want the feature back alright then you could sort by either your file name or your time code range your resolution or your modified date okay I actually leave this on uh, the file name now to wrap this section up real quick um, another great feature in speed grid that I want you guys to um, take note of is um, the filter here okay you could actually click it all right and the cursor appears meaning that you could type something in there now quickly this is what it does let's just say all right um, I made mention earlier on that you might be working in a shared storage or um, you might be working in an environment where you have thousands of files and you're looking for just a particular kind of file all right and you don't want speed grade to populate all the files if you have 10,000 populate everything here you will want just a specific um, 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 file extension okay the filter uses file extensions so MOV so um, dot AVI's dot R3D or ARI all right so the way that works is um, example on my red file I know I have thousands and thousands of footages there all right but I just need my R3D files my red files okay so what I go now is I'm gonna go here and change it again to um, sequences from folder and subtree all right now it's gonna go ahead and populate and give me everything all right but I could just go here and I say just give me the R3D files then click away from it you see what just happened so now it went in let me just make this a little smaller so you can see it went in there all right and out of the 1000 files okay it just separated and gave me all our 3d so all our 3ds so I could just go ahead and work with that okay if I want to just my movies okay I'll just go and type in movies click away from that repopulate and now boom I get now you notice that it is really I think this doesn't really change the number doesn't change because it's probably gonna say that stay the same but really do not worry about that because what happens is at the end of the day it's gonna show you just the files that you need okay if I decide that I need just my AVI files click away from that you see what happens it gave me all my AVI's alright so this is another quick way to sort um, um, your files if you have hundreds and hundreds of them and you wouldn't want um, speed grade uh, sometimes I'm the, the, um, the problem is not speed grade bringing up the clips it is how fast you want to work okay so it is uh, up to you how you would want to work on the next section I'm gonna talk about how to make your timelines and 
um, all the tabs here I'm gonna go into details about um, what each and everyone does and what you could really creatively do because this is a very very powerful um, software all right and once you're able to master it I believe you could be able to create a lot of um, great stuff with this all right thanks for listening